Okay, so let's continue. Uh, we last time we reviewed the uh, the body plot, right? And I also want to review with one more uh, sophisticated example with you. I think that is a good exercise. So let's say I have a function like this, h of s equals to v out divided by v in, right? I hope you, uh, is, hope you are very familiar with what is the meaning of h of s now. It's the transfer function, right? The output divided by the input, right? Usually we call it a gain, but now it's in the complex domain, right? Assume that it equals to this compressed form. R2 divided by R1, R2, C2S divided by 1 plus R1, C1S times 1 plus R2, C1S, right? Very long, right? But the point is when you see something like this as an electrical engineer, you should not be nervous. You say, I know what it, I know is complicated, but all I want is just look at its characteristics. It has some characteristics I know very well, right? What are they? The pole and the zero. After all, this is just a very long polynomial divided by a very long polynomial, right? But they have a characteristic, which are first, it is the zero. So what is the zero of this system? Oh, someone says zero. Yeah, good. Because we will set the numerator to zero to find what is zero. And we find that it is when s equal to zero, right? So that is a zero. Now, then how about naturally you will try to find the pole, right? How many poles do we have here? Two. Very good. Because one of you already found out that this is just a multiplication of two factor. And if I set it to zero, it can be either this equal to zero or this equal to zero, right? Set the numerator to zero. So because of this, the first pole equals to, I just pick, thank you. So I just randomly pick one of them, R1 minus, uh, R1C1, which I assume that it is uh, smaller than R2, okay, P2, okay? So I ask, maybe I say this later. Then for another pole, which comes can come from the zero of the next term becomes negative one over R2 times C2. I have, uh, my writing was uh, wrong. This should be C2, right? Instead of C1. That's what just my writing problem. So, okay. So now I have, no, I have a zero. I have a pole. I have two poles, right? So how would the transfer function look like? Now, okay, good. Uh, but let's remind ourselves what we are plotting for the body plot. First is the log frequency, right? And this is uh, 20 log the magnitude of h. Now, when I draw this figure, this point means it is zero. I mean, this usually you think this is zero, but this cannot be uh uh, this can be zero, right? But it is log something equal to zero. Where is the frequency equals to zero? Where is the DC? DC is what? When omega equal to what? What is DC? When omega equal to zero. What is log zero? Negative infinity, right? It's a little bit confusing, but you really need to put get this in mind. Otherwise, when people draw this, right? Sometimes I also confuse myself. I say, oh, is this the zero frequency? No, this is when frequency two pi, two pi. This is actually when two pi omega equal to one, right? Because you take the log. Depends on what you do it, right? So is this okay, anyone? So for infinity is for negative infinity, this equal to 
DC. Okay. Now, so when you say the C S equals zero, then what does it mean? And negative infinity is start going up already by 20 dB by per decade. But that may be scary. Well, then uh, from negative infinity, then well, now you reach this point. Are you saying that this becomes infinity also? Right? But we don't worry about that because it can be very, very low, right? So, so, but the point is that we know that the zero come from very, very negative part, right? So it will go first before P1 and P2, right? That is the main point. Right. So because of this, I just arbitrarily draw this. This is 20 dB per decade. So okay? And then what will happen? Eventually, you're going to hit the first pole. Right? So this one will become flat because this becomes plus 20 minus 20. Right? Because <coughs> The zero still has effect. It keep going up by plus 20 per, de per, decade, uh, per decade, right? And, but I hit the pole. The pole asked me to go down by minus 20 dB per decade. So plus, minus, plus 20 minus 20 becomes zero. So it becomes flat. Okay? And then eventually, it will go down again because this becomes plus 20 minus 20 minus 20. Right? So here, we have hit the first pole, which is P1. Here, the second pole, which is P2. And this is zero. Right. Is this okay? Now, good. So this is a, a way to have an idea. So what type of filter is this? What do you call this? Hmm? Okay. What is passed in this case? Is it low frequency, high frequency, or a certain frequency at the mid in the middle? Yeah, so it becomes a mid uh, band pass filter, right? So this is a band pass filter. Right, it only filter those frequency between it. So my goal is that because it's a bandpass filter, I really don't care what is outside. I want to uh, attenuate them. Of course, the attenuation might not be good enough. But anyway, I'm operating in this frequency. What I care is about what is the gain in this midband, right? So how do I find the gain? For the midband, it means P1 smaller than the frequency I'm interested in, omega and smaller than P2, right? It's between P1 and P2. So with this, I will know what is 1 plus R1C1S. Because P1 omega is much smaller than P1, right? S is J omega. This basically saying that this is much, much smaller than 1 plus R1, C1, 1 over R1, C1. Maybe this is not a good way to do this. I think, I, I, I sorry, I, let me just uh, only discuss this because this can get confusing, right? So I want to look at the value of R1, C1, S. But R1, C1, S, right? Actually, it is larger. I'm sorry. It should be larger. It should be much larger than R1C1P1. Make sense? Because the omega is larger than P1, right? So R1C1S will be larger than R1C1P1. Is that okay? Any questions? Again, omega is larger than P1. This S is just J omega. S is J omega. So of course, R1C1 omega 
is larger than R1C1P1 because omega is larger than P1, right? But P1 is equal to R1, 1 over R1C1, right? So, so maybe I also put absolute value if you think this is confusing, right? We don't talk about the negative and the uh, imaginary number. Then what does it mean? It means the R1C1S is much larger than 1. Right, because this is equals to one, R1C1 times P1. P1 is R1C1, one over R1C1. So R1C1 times P1 equals to one, right? So this term is much larger than one. It means for the frequency in the mid band, I satisfy this condition, right? So because of this, then one plus R1C1S is approximately equal to R1C1S, right? You would just think that this one is much smaller than this guy when we are in the mid-band. Is that clear? Now, how about the other term? This is one, this is two. If you start, how about R1, sorry, the second term? R2C2S. This one is much smaller than R2C2P2, right? Because I say that it's the mid band, which is less than P2. So this one, J omega, is less than P2. So this is much smaller than this one, right? But again, this one equals to 1, right? Because P2 is 1 over R2C2. P2 is 1 over R to C2. So R to C2 times P2 equals to 1. So again, you say this term is much smaller than 1. That means 1 plus R2 C2S is approximately equal to 1 because this term is very small. Yeah. And because of this, my what my H of S in the mid band, right? Is approximately equal to negative R2 divided by R1, which is okay. R2C2S, which is the numerator, again, okay. But the bottom becomes one plus R1C1S. Ah, uh, no. What should it be? 1 plus R1C1S is equals to what? Ah, uh, no. R1C1S, right? Yeah. So, so I say something wrong, right? So I would do this. And then, how about 1 plus R2C2S? It becomes 1, right? So then you do some uh, cancellation. The S will be gone. And this becomes negative. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I should not put negative here because I'm talking about the absolute value. This becomes R2 squared divided by R1 squared times C2 divided by C1. Right? So with this, you can decide how to choose the resistor and capacitor in that circuit. We don't know, we did not see the circuit. We only have the word function. We only have the transfer function, right? So, so that you achieve the gain that you want. But however, remember, while you choose this, you need to make sure your P1 and P2, which depends on what you're choosing, extend the band that you want, right? You, you can have a very high gain, but then maybe you make P2 very close to P1. Then you have a very narrow band in that case. Right? So this is an exercise that I want to go over one more time with you. Is that okay? Okay. Um, yeah. So last week, uh, last class, I also talked about how to find the, uh, if you have a capacitive component, how you find the transfer function. It's not difficult like this one, just by inspection. We know that the gain equals to, because it's a common source amplifier, equals to what? Negative 
GM R D parallel one over SCL, right? So here is nothing new, right? You just treat CL as a loading is in parallel with RD in small signal. So one over SCL, done, right? Then we introduce a new method. In this method, we say that we want to find the pole only. I'm not care about the whole transfer function due to some reason. I don't want to do the calculation. I want to quickly estimate the pole and then change my circuit and design it to fit my purpose. Now in this case, I want to filter a certain frequency. So I need to know what the P1 and P2 in my circuit. And then I can quickly uh, come up with something and then do a more uh, delicate hand calculation and then maybe do a spice simulation to confirm and tape out my chip, right? So this 